Welcome back to the shed. Now, I don't normally do product reviews and stuff like that, simply because nobody normally sends me anything to review. But I was recently given the opportunity, really, to uh, to try out a little machine which I thought would be a really good addition to the workshop. Um, I certainly could see some uh, some possible future capabilities of this you know to go alongside with my uh, sort of model engineering making and stuff like that so um so yeah i'm gonna let's dive in and have a look at this it's a uh, cnc 3018 router engraver let's try it so the machine arrived after a couple of weeks and I naturally opened it upside down, but otherwise it was well packaged and without any damages. The machine comes as a kit which requires assembly, although the motor and spindle came pre-assembled onto the carriage, with the stepper motor and lead screw ready connected. The machine chassis is constructed from extruded aluminium channel sections and phenolic resin panels. The bearing housings were all made from injection moulded hard plastics. There was also a kit of fixings which included all the tools needed to build the machine and a set of NEMA 17 stepper motors, a USB control board and all the associated wiring connections and of course a basic but adequate assembly manual. Assembly was straightforward and took about an hour to complete, making sure that all the parts were set square and parallel and running smoothly. The motor housing is an injection moulded unit which clumps a 775 24 volt spindle motor, which is capable of 1000 rpm, and attached to this is an ER11 collet chuck fitted with the 1 8th of an inch collet to suit the supplied cutters. 
The product was supplied with a set of 10 identical V-type cutters to get you started, so one of these was fitted ready for my first cuts. In reality this wasn't actually my first carve, as I had done some test pieces before, but it was my first attempt on making something purposeful. The UGS software gives real time feedback on the process of the carve, an estimated duration and the blue lines indicating the remaining toolpaths of the job. Here I'm using scrap offcuts of laminated MDF flooring, which are great as test pieces as you get familiar with the machine's feed and speed capabilities. There it is finished. It's took a while that. I think uh, I need to work on my settings. But uh, looks nice. To secure the board to the table, the machine is supplied with these clamps, which I honestly did not find very user friendly at all. OK, they work, but they're extremely fiddly to use, as the T-nuts easily become misaligned within the slots. So I made some aluminium replacement T-nuts on my milling machine, which now fit snugly within the table and do not rotate. And I also replaced the wing nuts with some nice knurled brass thumb screws. I will probably improve these further in time by making some stepped spacer blocks which can span the table slots, but these improvements are already much better than the original clamps supplied. The V bits supplied are not suitable for carving large areas, so I brought some additional two flute end mills for use in the chuck to allow faster rough cutting of material, and also a 6mm collet which I hope to use with my pre existing set of 6mm end mills that I use in my mill, although I haven't tested these out in the mini CNC as yet. Now the machine is never going to perform like some of the CNC stuff that you see on YouTube, but providing you get familiar with the speed and feed rates and the depth of cut for given materials then the machine will be capable of handling whatever you throw at it. You just need to be patient. For my designs I've been using easel software from Inventables which is very easy to create basic designs for carving and all the speed and feed rates are easily managed within the software. It also gives a 3D representation of the finished design as well as displaying the toolpaths of the carve.
This sign for Mr Brown's shed was cut at 1.5mm deep with a 1 8th of an inch end mill and took about 45 minutes. I think the key to getting the most from this machine is trial and error as you soon start to learn what works and what doesn't. I'm sure many a stormtrooper would be proud to put their beer on this coaster. Another form of work holding is to use masking tape and superglue, which is surprisingly secure, and this method was used to hold down a sheet of 1mm brass plate from my next car. Now I still need to refine my settings somewhat and do more experimental cuts on metalwork as I haven't quite nailed this yet, but having a very slow feed rate and shallow depth of cut is definitely the way to go when engraving metals. but my first attempt came out okay, so I wasn't going to waste my efforts. My plan is to fill the lettering with paint and make it stand out from the reflective brass. And there is the finished plaque, ready to adorn one of my model engines. I think considering this was my first attempt at engraving metal, it worked out quite well. So there you have it, the 3018 Mini Engraver Router CNC machine. Now I have to say that this little machine has far exceeded my expectations as it's just, well it's just so much fun. I just love watching it do its thing when it's cutting on the table. It's just kind of exciting, you never quite know what you're going to get. And um, okay, it's never going to win any kind of records for speed as it's, um, you know, you have to kind of watch your feeds and speeds. And, you know, I've been working on this now. I've been playing with this, I should say, for about a week to 10 days on and off in the evenings. And um, it's just through sort of trial and error that you sort of learn really what sort of speeds and what feeds that you need, uh, what it's capable of really. Now, as long as you take it easy, do plenty of sort of test practices and stuff like that then I think this machine really is actually quite a capable little CNC router. Now one of the other nice things about this is it's actually upgradable so it can kind of grow with you know with, with the sort of jobs that you need to do. 
Uh, you can you can get a faster sort of higher powered um, motor for the spindle head. You can also buy extension kits if you want to make the actual um, the size of the the working area larger. And you can also uh, you know extend the height of this so you can get a, a board in there which is a bit thicker you know thicker material if you want to work from that. So yeah, I mean it really is kind of you know it's expandable. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of fun in the future with this, possibly upgrading it, doing a few modifications to it. I want to fit an emergency stop to it because the number of times it uh, scares the hell out of me and I just want to hit stop. And there you are with the mouse trying to find the stop button. So, yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to do a few mods to this and, and sort of improve it. But, you know, on the whole, treat it gently, practice. And it's an absolutely fabulous bit of kit. Now, as a starter machine, the 3018 CNC is just the perfect introduction to, well, CNC machining, really. And uh, I must say that all, all my concerns about learning new software and trying to understand, you know, machine code, G code and stuff like that. Well, it, it basically that it just wasn't a problem at all. I use the easel software, which, um, you know, it's. It's, it's, well, it's free to use fully functionally for 30 days, but after that, it's it's limited use. But it still allows you to design stuff on easel and, uh, you know, export the G-code and, you know, send send that to the machine via, say, you know, G-code sender, which is what I use, universal G-code sender. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, just, it's just great fun, really. I mean, for a sub £150 machine, CNC machine, it really is a fantastic introduction, uh, you know, to just start learning how to do CNC. Even if you're not going to take it any further, it's still just a great machine for, you know, making fun things like, um, you know, beer coasters and stuff like that. Or, you know, a sign for the rabbit shed like I've made there for Mr. Brown. Or, or just, you know, just some general just stuff, just, just making stuff. It's just, um, well, it's just fun. You know, <laughs> and you know what more with it being sort of. I mean, it's excellent value. It gives fantastic results after a little bit of understanding, and uh, yeah, it's just simply lots and lots of fun. So you know, I'm going to love it. It's going to be a great addition to the workshop. I'm not sure whether it's going to be able to do sort of, um, you know, cast iron and stuff like that. But I guess as long as you take the feeds and speeds right down, right slow, keep it all nice and slow. I'm hoping to be able to start sort of engraving, you know, like my initials in, in my uh, engines and stuff like that, you know, in brass and possibly cast iron, like I say. We'll see how that works out in another video. I'm not 100% sure whether it will, but like I say, we'll see. So, um, well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little video of my sort of uh, first steps, really, into CNC machining. And, um, well, I'm sure we'll see a bit more of this little machine in the future on my channel. So, uh, well, I guess that wraps it up, really. So, as always, um, thanks for being around. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>